Greetings and salutations, fans and family, friends and neighbors, lovers and losers of all kinds. This is Just an Observation, and I am your host, Admiral Oliver Franklin Doom. So sit back, enjoy, and let's have some fun, shall we? Today, I want to talk about an actor that most everybody who's old enough to remember would remember. His name is Jack Webb, and I am betting that when most people hear the name Jack Webb, this is what they think about. That, of course, is the opening flourish to Dragnet, the show that, through the years, most people would know Jack Webb from, because that's the one that really set him on the map of television and movies. That's what he's best known for. But before he became Joe Friday of Dragnet fame, he had many other radio parts. Today I want to focus on one of those that's called Pat Novak for Hire. Sure. I'm Pat Novak, for hire. That's what the sign out in front of my office says, Pat Novak, for hire. Down on the waterfront in San Francisco, you don't get prizes for being subtle. If you want to make a living down here, you got to get your hand in the till any way you can. You rob Peter to pay Paul, and then you put it on the cuff. It's a happy life if you don't mind looking up at a headstone, because sooner or later you draw trouble a size too big. And that intro from the 13th of October of 1946 shows the basic premise behind the show Pat Novak for Hire. He lives and works on the waterfront in San Francisco and does whatever he needs to do to make a living. One of the things that made Pat Novak for Hire different than Dragnet was the writing. In Dragnet, Jack Webb was straight-laced, to the point, and professional. Pat Novak was written with a lot more down-to-earth type writing. I'm going to give you a few examples and let you decide for yourself. I found that out Tuesday night. It was about 11 o'clock when I came out of the office and I started down the waterfront. It was raining and the street was as deserted as a warm bottle of beer. As I got near the corner, an old man stepped out of the darkness and started across the street. It was a short trip because a car started up down the street and the old man couldn't have made it with a pocket full of aces. You know, it's easy to sleep if you got the right friends. When those two gone-ups were through, I hit the floor and made Rip Van Winkle look like an insomnia victim. I didn't like the floor, but it was in better shape than my face. I don't know how long I was there, but it must have been a couple of hours. I rolled over once and tried to get up, but it was like trying to barbecue a cake of ice. There was a sick, sweet smell in the room. I tried to place it, but my nose was out on strike, so I went to sleep again. Next thing I knew, it sounded like New Year's Eve. Here you go, Patsy. Up on the couch. (coughs) What's the matter? Nothing. If you're a kitchen stove, the room is full of gas. Oh, some of my playmates, I guess. Well, you weren't at the apartment, so I tried here. Yeah. What time is it? Two o'clock. Who got the quaint idea of the gas chamber? A girlfriend. It was love at first sight. Did she get the letter? I left it home. You're getting smart. Yeah. Three hundred dollars worth. They lifted my dough. Well, you... Sure. Patsy. Yeah? What did your girlfriend look like? Was she the lively type? Yeah. Why? What's the matter? Because she's not anymore. Yeah. Those gunsels play rough. She's kind of pretty. What did she do besides send out vibrations? I don't know. But she knew all about John St. John. Yeah? She picked up a bait like a hungry bass. Also, look at that ring. How did you get around to that? The insignia on it. It's the same one that's on the envelope. Spliced crosses. Let's go home, Patsy. The police will be here. Yeah. Yeah. Even Hellman will know she's dead. 
One of the recurring characters in Pat Novak for Hire is somebody that is described as a drunk and a former doctor by the name of Jocko Madigan. And Pat Novak tends to lean on him to do some of the dirty work that Pat needs to get done. And he makes it very interesting as he does. I looked up the only honest guy I know, an ex-doctor and a boozer by the name of Jocko Madigan. A good guy, but to him, a hangover is the price of being sober. I finally found him singing in a Mason Street bar. Dinky, dinky, dobby, sure, dinky, dinky, day. Jocko, the fine Jocko, story. I want to talk to you. Ah, Patsy, you're just in time for the counterpoint. I'm singing a song, a little sentimental thing from my childhood. It'll keep. I got a problem, Jocko. You'll always have a problem, Patsy, because you can't keep out of trouble. You know that, don't you? You have no self-control. Yeah, all right, Jocko. You have no more self-control than a bucket of mercury dumped in a marble staircase. All right, Jocko, check the bright talk. I just saw a guy get killed. You're like some violent disorder in nature, some large but unprofitable storm. You keep whirling in circles, Patsy. And if you ever go more than ten feet in one direction, it's because some woman is nine feet away. Then it begins all over again. Are you all through? Yes, get to the point. That's another of your troubles. You never get to the point. Some old guy was killed down on the Embarcadero. He checked out 50 feet away from me. Who killed him? I don't know. And why do you care? Professional jealousy? Some car came out of nowhere and clipped him. You sure it wasn't an accident? Yeah, just like the fall of France. Will you stop kneeling me, Jocko? I told you the guy got killed. He was murdered right in front of me. I gotta find a guy called John St. John. How St. John? John St. John. I don't feel like vaudeville tonight, Jocko. The old man gave me $300 to deliver a letter. I made him a promise. Well, you can break it now with only the slightest risk. I got the license number of the car. I want you to hop down and look it up. Then check at headquarters to see if the guy's got a record. I don't like policemen. They depress me. Check it. I gotta go out here to this address. Here. Uh Uh-huh. Well, what kind of neighborhood is it? Well, it's not exactly a neighborhood. It's more like an architectural afterthought, a lingering defense against the early California bear. All right, all right, no speeches. Just check on that license plate. Now, if I'm not at my place, try this address here. Yes, that's always very interesting at this time of night. Well, goodbye, lover. Novak's nemesis in all of these episodes is Hellman, a policeman who's constantly trying to arrest Novak for whatever crime he happens to be on the scene of, and ends up in the end getting schooled by Novak because Novak figures it all out. In later episodes, no, uh, Hellman is played by none other than Raymond Burr, and it is just... I'm going to play this clip from this same episode that I've been playing all along, But at some point, I'm going to go ahead and cover Raymond Burr in both this, Pat Novak for Hire, and in his starring role on Fort Laramie. Come on, we bet. On your way out the door, Jocko, try it sideways because I think it's blocked. Hello, Novak. You look pale. It's my color scheme. What do you care, Hellman? I'm... It looks peaceful. Yeah, be quiet or you'll wake her up. Oh, tiptoe. She'll always cut her throat before she goes to sleep. Who is she, Novak? I don't know. It's awful cozy here for a bunch of perfect strangers. I don't know every dead girl in town, Hellman. You'll have to check. You can still write, can't you, Novak? Huh? That's all you'll need down at headquarters. Come on. Get out of the haze, Hellman. You don't know who's dead yet, but you're going to book somebody. Yeah. What are you doing up here, praising the joint? I came up to find a guy named John St. John. She doesn't look like a guy named John St. John. She was my lead. I came up here to smell out a rat. She had a half Nelson on me when two Gunsels walked in. They came up to fix the gas meter, I think. You stay out of this. I'll make every effort. Now, if you're smart, you'll fingerprint this place, Hellman. Those boys were cute. They've been in somebody's jail. I'll handle my job. You stick to murder. It'll go a long way to pin this on me, Hellman. I can go a long way, Novak. Not with what you got to drag. We get a call in the middle of the night, come up here and find you standing over a dead girl. That's right. And you want me to sprinkle powder all over. Back up and take a better look, Novak. The view's fine, Hellman. And if you'll take a good look, you'll know why. You haven't got anything to give the DA except a slim lead and a fat hand. You're going to need help. Not on this one. You need help to find the street. Come on back to center, Hellman. Even with both hands, you couldn't... Yeah. Oh, forget it. So take the medicine like a good boy. I'm not going to walk out and let the two of you tour the town. I'm going to book one or both of you on a murder charge. All right. Book Jocko here, then. 
I love you in a generous mood. You got a string then, Hellman. Somebody's got to find John St. John. Uh, who's going to find Jocko? Stop worrying, I'll bail you out. You haven't got the right size heart, Novak. You'll let him die on the vine. Helm, sometimes you're guilty of unexpected wisdom. I know it's reflex action, but it's consoling anyway. I want you, Novak. I want you bad. I'll take this guy as a down payment, but I'm going to close out with you. Remember that. I will. All right. Come on, mister. Wait a minute. Patsy, you're not going to let him lug me off like this. What else can I do? The guy likes you. And with that ends my look at Pat Novak for hire. I am planning on doing another series by Jack Webb at some point. It's called Jeff Regan, Private Investigator. And it's as interesting as Pat Novak can be. Thank you for watching Just an Observation. I hope you enjoyed it. And come back. And always remember, live life as if awesome is a downgrade.